Hi guys, it is April from Getting a Hooker With It. Today we're here to talk about the worst books that I read in 2019. I have five that I want to share with you. Let's get into it. Now I need to say, um, these are the worst books to me. Some of this is very, very much unpopular opinions, for sure. Um, and also, I did not include DNFs. So I did a whole other video about the books that I DNF'd in 2019. A lot of the time it was because I wasn't enjoying it. Um, so those are completely separate books. These are the books that I read from cover to cover. I finished it, and I finished it, and I went, oh, I didn't enjoy any of it. So we're going um, in order. So we're going to end with my least favorite book that I read in 2019, a book that I just couldn't stand. So we're, we're going in order. Um, so we're going to start out with a very controversial one, I think. Um, this is a book that a lot of people really have loved. I think it was a, a Goodreads winner for historical fiction and I'm sorry to say that I really didn't like Pachinko and it was a beast. <laughs> this is a long, well it says it's around 500 pages but small, small writing and I didn't like it and I will explain why. So this story is about uh, a young girl in South Korea in the early 1900s she becomes pregnant and the guy that has impregnated her kind of drops the ball and she finds out that he's married with children and so she is on her own until an older man says, you know what, I will step in and I will become the father and we're gonna get married and we're moving to Japan. And it is about their experience and how a lot of the time people who um, were Korean in Japan at this time were treated like second class citizens. And so it's very much a family saga. Like you think that you're going to follow this one woman throughout it, but it follows her and also her children. Um, I really struggled with this. I found it very boring. <laughs> Um, I felt like nothing happened in this book and yet so much did happen, I suppose, but nothing that I was interested in at all. Um, there were moments where I was like, oh, now it's going to get interesting because, you know, World War II happened and they ended up like leaving and going to a farmhouse and nothing really happened, it felt like. And for 500 pages, I wanted something to happen. I also struggled because the, of the characters. I never really felt close to any of the characters at all. And I, especially as we moved on to the next generation, I didn't enjoy that. And you know what I found really strange was that main characters would disappear or die and it was like, they died moving on. Like, it, there was no um, staying with that moment. There was no build up to those moments. It was just kind of flippant to me. And I really don't enjoy that at all. I, I wish that I could say that I enjoyed this book, but I didn't. I also thought, you know, um, maybe it was the audio, but I really don't think so. I actually think the only reason I finished this book was because I was listening to it on audio and I could be doing other things. I didn't like it. Oh dear. Next, uh, we've got Dead Woman Walking. The premise of this one was so good. It's a thriller and it's about a, a group of people who are in a hot air balloon and there are two sisters in this hot air balloon and the hot air balloon goes down and there's only one survivor. Now, right before the hot air balloon crashes, they witness a man killing a woman. And this man looks up and sees that they've witnessed it and is on the hunt 
for these people and so he's basically going to kill them all. Luckily he has, only has one person that he needs to track down. So it is her journey of racing through the woods trying to escape this man and uh, I really didn't like it. I thought it was uneventful and I didn't really find the uh, the villain. He was scary, but he wasn't layered in any way. Like he was almost like a the Terminator. I don't know how to explain it. Where like there just weren't any other layers because he was robotic and like just must kill the end. That's what I will do. Like I just really didn't enjoy that. I also didn't like that there was a whole other side story with this detective who's trying to find out what happened at this hot air balloon crash and trying to find this woman who survived it and basically what ends up happening with that uh, storyline is they just repeat what you've just read. So the detective is finding out what you've just read from this woman's perspective and I really find that lazy writing. So I, I just found this very lazy writing and not not a good thriller, not a good thriller at all. So I didn't enjoy that. Next is <laughs> The Huntress. When I finished The Huntress, I thought this is going to be the worst read of the year and I have two more to share. So, uh, God, I had a hard reading year. Um, the Huntress is a very popular historical fiction. This book goes back and forth in time and has multiple characters and perspectives. Um, so we follow uh, a woman whose father is getting remarried. She meets the woman and she has just this feeling she doesn't like her. Um, we also follow this man who is tracking down um, Nazis after the war um, and, and bringing them in to basically stand trial for war crimes and he's trying to track down this woman called the huntress who was like this horrible german woman who did terrible terrible things during the war and we follow a woman who um was a night flyer um who was russian she was a woman and she was a flyer and we follow all of these perspectives and they all interlink and i i didn't like it at all like there there's something about this writer like I'm done with this writer now um she writes characters that are very very flat and say the same thing over and over again and um yeah I didn't enjoy that at all I also I remember feeling like they're trying to track down this huntress so bad because she's so terrible and there's only a mention at the beginning of what she did and it's like she killed one guy um, and they, they talk about that a lot throughout the book but otherwise they don't really talk about her war crimes and I remember feeling like so she killed one guy in a terrible way why are we so focused on this woman when there are so many other people who killed like hundreds and hundreds of people um, during the war I just didn't buy it and I I just I didn't like the writing I didn't like the writing and the characters at all so uh, yeah I'm done with that author for sure um next is Hex so Hex is a horror story about a woman who haunts a town um, all of the people in this town can never leave because essentially when they leave they feel like committing suicide and so they have to go back and she haunts the town she has been blinded and she just shows up randomly and she'll show up in your dining room while you're having dinner and she just kind of stands there and she's the the town witch and this had every opportunity to scare the living daylights out of me because I have this like I think I've had nightmares and also a major fear of waking up in the middle of the night and finding someone staring at me. It's it's something that actually happened to this 
my neighborhood when I lived alone. There was a man breaking into women's homes and doing that. And it terrified me and just the idea of that. And I'm also really scared of ghosts. So the idea of this like supernatural woman who could never die staring at you, even though she's blind, but like being by your bedside when you wake up, truly terrified me. So I was like, I'm gonna love this book. And I actually found it silly and like very silly and it didn't scare me at all. And I know a lot of people love this book and many people say that it's better in the original language. This was translated, I don't know from what, what language it was translated from, but I really hated it. Like genuinely hated it. And when I got to the end, I was like, why, why was this written? I don't know. I just, for horror, I guess I don't like humor in my horror and I found it very, very silly. So I didn't like that. But at least it was um, inventive. Like it's an interesting storyline. And that is why it's not my worst book of the year. Because it really was trying to do something new and interesting. And so yes, I hated it. But it didn't land the worst book of the year because it was trying to do something new. The worst book of the year from me is An Unwanted Guest by Sherry Lapina. And this is the worst book of the year for me because it did nothing new, like nothing new at all. This um, is about a group of people who go to this inn um, during winter. It's meant to be like a nice winter getaway. And they get there, there's a big huge storm sets in right away and the guests start being killed off by somebody who's there. And I found this ridiculous. This is very much supposed to be a nod to And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. There's even characters reading Agatha Christie in here. And this could not have failed more. Agatha Christie in And Then There Were None makes you really... Um, question everyone. Um, all of the characters could potentially be the uh, the killer and you as the as the reader are are second guessing all the time because of how she wrote the book. In this, the characters are questioning one another all the time, but there's never really a good enough reason why these characters would be doing, would be killing people off. Well, there were no breadcrumbs for the reader to guess. And I, I don't like that. Behind Her Eyes last year was my worst book of that year. And it also had that thing where there were no breadcrumbs, you couldn't guess. At the end I was like, oh, who cares who the, who the killer is and like, there were literally no clues that you could guess at all um, who the killer was. And I, I just thought it was incredibly lazy writing. Also, this could have been so atmospheric. It's set in a great storm. And, you know, it could have been absolutely terrifying. There's this little area out back that was kind of like a an ice bar that the guests were supposed to go over and and drink at this ice bar and I thought oh my gosh wouldn't it be fun if someone got murdered there and there it just was not atmospheric whatsoever and I'm thinking of stepping away from Sherry Lapina after reading this because it was so so badly written hated it anyway let me know in the comments below what was the worst book that you read in 2019 I would love to know and I will talk with you soon okay Bye guys. That's sad. I just opened this. I listened to this on audio and I, this is like a secondhand book and someone had written like a little cute thing to their mom. This is really cute. It says, Dear Mommy, Mom, Mama, I will love you for always no matter how mad I am. If we are apart from each other, I will miss you no matter how mad I am. I love you so, so much no matter how mad I am. And it says, you can laminate this. That's so cute. Oh dear, it looks like she only got to page 13 of this book and also put it down.